Let's say a person intend to save ten thousand dollars a year for the first year. I will increase the payment by ten percent each year. Now, if his investment return is eight percent per annum, how much will he have in his account at the end of fifteen years? Again, before attending any of this question, please make a point to plot the time horizon. Okay, so you intend to save so ten thousand a year by increase the payment by ten percent each year. All right. Now, for how many years? Fifteen years. So your first year is how much? Ten thousand. Then it grows by how much? Grow by how much? Ten percent. It means eleven thousand. You want to find the x x bar. Now, but this is a trick. Eh? Your investment return is how much? Eight percent. Listen very carefully. Eh? Listen. So this one is what? Future value. Is that growth? Yes. All right. Future value growing entity. Okay, listen very carefully. Begin work. PNT ten thousand and fifteen. Now this one very confusing, ah. Eh? This one, eh, your I is less than your growth. Your I is less than your growth. All right, eight minus ten is negative two. Divided by one point one, you get negative one point eight one two. Is there anything wrong? No. Your I must be negative in this case. Eh? Highlight this negative. Your I must be negative. If your I positive, you cannot get the answer. Yeah. Okay, right. Your I must be negative. When you go by the equation, these are a few example of unique one, whereby your I must be negative. Okay, so you try, right? Exactly. Minus two divided by one by one, negative one by two. You compute present value. Then you write this separately. Erase the memory. Then present value one seven one zero nine five. That's what you should get the answer. Can you follow? You should get the answer. Okay, all right. Okay, there's a slide. This one is a negative one, present value. Okay, this one. Okay, now try this out. Do you get the same answer? <coughs> Do you get the same answer? Okay, now please do your practice, huh? Okay, now, do you get the same answer? Okay, now, for example, okay, you have to think on that. Now, these are a few things you have to think of. Go back, recall, recall, recall. Flow, uh, you know, future value growing and the For example, now, for future value growing, there are two steps. Uh, listen very carefully. There are two steps. First, you need to set begin work. Then you have to do what we call adjusted R. Then you compute present value. And then second step, uh, once you compute present value, then you find the future value. Alright, you find the future value. Now think of that. Uh, I'll show you what it means. Uh, what it means. Uh, now mark this slide. When you go back, you these are a few important slides you're thinking about. Okay, what we call future value growing entity. Future value growing entity. Okay? For example, let's say your your contribution to EPF is monthly. Alright, very simple, huh? You contribute money monthly, alright, every month, constant deposit. Okay? But every year your salary do increase. Alright, double five percent, whatever. So your increment, you know, increases on. Can you follow? So it's different from normal NOT, you know. Normal NOT, yeah, your contribution is there, alright, but the amount is remain constant, no growth. Okay, now let's take a look. Right? For example, now listen very carefully, yeah, this part here. Yeah. David set aside fifteen thousand dollars a year for an investment. This will be increased by four percent each year. He has chosen a fund that gives him a rate of seven point five percent a year for the next ten years. How much will he accumulate over the period? <coughs> now again, in attempting any of these questions, uh, do plot a timeline. Year zero, right? This is what fifteen years, it? Eh? No, ten years, ah. Uh. Yeah, so on, huh? Now, this one is future value anything. Now, he pays how much? Fifteen thousand dollars a year. And then is there growth or not? Yes. There's growth. How much is the growth? Four. Right, okay, four percent. It means next year at four percent will become fifteen thousand six hundred. 
Can you follow? And you're trying to find the value at the end of year 10. You understand? Get this basic right. This is the most important. So is it normal future value now? No. Is that growth? Yes. <coughs> and you must observe these two steps. Now, this one is calculated using the formula, but that's not so important. Now, how do you calculate using your financial calculator? Okay, now try this out in your financial calculator. This one should be the same as calculating using a formula. The only difference is that for present value growing and working. Now try. Clear time value money map. What? Set begin what? Set P stroke Y to 1. Alright, it's 1. Okay, now listen carefully. Huh? Now before you do, huh? you compute this present value. Once you compute this value, huh? you must write in a separate paper or whatever. Then you clear memory again. You have to clear memory to compute this one. Can you follow? There are two steps. I repeat, huh? first you calculate this one. Once you get this value, huh? All right, you write in a separate paper and then you clear the memory. Can you follow? Okay, now try out. Do you get the answer? Okay, right? Try out, clear memory. My voice is please uh, for class one. Clear memory, shift nine. Okay, all right, okay. Select variable, execute, execute is. Okay, right, try. Okay, okay. right. Okay, right, try. Okay, now, you follow, begin what? Must begin what, huh? There are two steps. Step P so Y1. So step one is compute present value. Step two is compute future value. Okay, so you run this separately. Right? And then after you clear memory. Okay, and then you do step two. Okay, you have to do step two. Okay, alright, try. 